Pam, bum, What's up guys, Sterling again and today I'm excited because we are doing a React series which I'm very very excited about again. Well, last session we talked about React Fragment, definitely check it out if you haven't seen it. And today we're going to talk about everything about JSX you're going to encounter using React. Without any further ado, let's get our hands dirty. I'm going to go ahead and remove this for some of you that might seem challenging. I'm going to go ahead and wrap this one into a div. And there we go, ladies and gentlemen, we have our JSX right, right there. What are the gotchas? First gotcha is make sure that instead of having class as your class name, something like that, JSX is going to yell at you and say, all right, buddy, I do not accept class. I accept something called class name. So the bottom line is all your class name, which means your class attribute to an HTML element has to be class name in case you want them to have a class name. Like so, if we go back now to the, uh, like so, if you go back now, we now have a class called class test. Why would this reason? Well, there is some reserved keyword uh, that JSX doesn't want you to mess around with. What else? Well, if you have a label and within your label, let's say we have a label and we have usually label takes something called for. Well, in JSX, it has to be HTML4, okay? Instead of having a for, it has to be HTML4. And if we console log this out, we can say something name. And if we go and inspect this element, we should be able to see translated into four. And there you go. We now have four. So these are the two gotchas so far. What else can we do with JSX? Remember, we said this is a component, right? Well, if this is a component, let's create another component called app. And remember, a component is just a function that renders a piece of code. And this one's going to just render a piece of code and this one the only thing we want this one to handle is going to be something very basic okay and if you do not understand the component right now don't worry we're gonna cover this in the next session uh, I'm gonna say I am Easterling now the other thing that you can do with JSX you can take a node component and actually render it inside of JSX like this you call it and then you use it inside the curly bracket you can render a node component inside JSX and now we have something like this. Now JSX can also take some JavaScript expression. Let's say we had we had a total where we can technically feel free to take five or uh, five plus five and let's say we want to render this variable inside of JSX we use it we can add inside a p tag and we can say result or we can say instead total is and we render a JavaScript expression inside a curly bracket. And what is the JavaScript expression? It is a variable called total that is doing a calculation. Now we should be seeing this inside our JSX as 10. Now, believe it or not, you can also take that five instead of the variable and do it inside this curly bracket and it will still be working as expected. Okay, which is very cool. Once again, you can do JavaScript expression down here. How about follow? -up? Yes, you can also do a follow. -up. Let's say we have a list and let's say this list we have uh, probably uh, mango or, you know, pineapple or maybe we have avocado. I can't even spell it right, but we'll see. Well, the other thing that you can do is we can do a loop inside JSX. The only gotcha is no follow. -up. No for loop. OK, we're going to use something called map instead instead instead. This is what you're going to going to use in order for us to be able to loop inside something inside JSX. Let's say we have an order list and within that order list, let's say inside the order list, we have three element. Uh, now we're going to loop through that array and generate those element. All right. So let's do that. We have a curly bracket ready for our expression. Once again, this is a curly bracket. This is going to receive a JavaScript expression. We grab the list, which is this list of the array, and we're going to loop through it. In this case, we're going to use map. This is how we loop through it, okay? And then this can take the so ES6 version, and now we can create our element that we would like to create. In this case, we want to create an LI, close the LI, uh, and this is going to be the item, and this is going to be the index. 
and now inside of every single one of them we can put the item right now the only requirement before we talk about the requirement let's see if this worked and there you guys go we see all of them available here this is really good but the only requirement if we look at the console and once we are using the looping thing it require for us to have the key over it which means we need to have a key over the item that we are iterating over and we pass it the index because the index is going to be always unique starting from zero one two three so we pass it the index and now they have a unique key and now you no longer see this area kind of showing something like this once again let's review i know this might sound complicated uh this this whole idea behind the session is not for you to fully be able to do everything but at least have an idea what are the things that you can do using jsx so for class should be class name for should be html4 you could do javascript expression down here you can do loop except there is no for loop it's going it has to be uh, using the map feature inside the JSX. All right, the other thing that you can also do is you can create even inside your JSX. The only downside about it, your event has to be camel cases. For example, if I have an event called click, and let's say I wanted the click to do something for me, well, this click has to be written as camel cases. And camel cases, if you guys don't know what camel cases is, what they're really talking about is uh, you have two or uh, two word. For example, we got the word on, we got the word click. Well, whenever you have the second word or the third or fourth word, all of them should be starting with a capital letter. In this case, the word click, which is the second word, should be starting with a capital letter. And we kind of have it like this. If we had something else, maybe click test. Well, the third will also will be starting with a capital letter as so this is considered as camel cases well this is how we have event in jsx this might sounds all confusing but this is jsx guys okay all right so we can have event let's say we have a function wherever we can we can have this function but events in jsx should be camel cases all right, so one last thing I'd like to mention is, let's say for some reason or for any reason, you'd like to do an if statement. You'd like to check if this is true or do this or if something do or you do something else. Well, you can do that by also using ternary operator inside JSX. For example, let's say we want, uh, we want true. If this is true, then we're going to do something else and we can just say, uh, we can render an, a P tag, P tag, slash p and we can say uh, this is true and if it's not true then we can render maybe another p tag and this p tag actually is going to be uh, slash uh, we can say no true something like this so this is an if logic inside jsx that you can do using ternary operator uh, and of course we need to comment these lines out because it does require a function for the event but we're not going to do that right now but let's see out you see guys look at this we now have this is true because this value is now is equal to true if we had two is equal to two that's going to be true then the same thing is going to appear because the condition is still evaluating to true now if this was false for example if we say two is equal to four that's false then the next Thing is going to render and all of this is inside JSX that you can do let's say we had a function for any reason and this function does calculate right and this calculate is going to take to return 10 multiplied by 20 who God knows what this number is going to be but this is gonna do some operation right well you can call a function inside your JSX by doing say let's do multiply multiply and then we can call our function inside our jsx like so and let's test that out multiply should be equal to crazy number and there you go it's equal to 200 so the bottom line is you can do all of these type of operation inside jsx but there's one thing i'd like to notice here do not do this inside a functional component of course you don't know what a functional component is but the bottom line is all of this can be done using jsx all right, guys, this is everything I had for you in the next session. We're going to be exploring different type of component in React. So far, we've seen a component is just a function, but what are the different type of component 
with experience using React, and we're gonna break them down for you in the next session. Thank you.